So what's Australia's contribution? What do we actually do to try and prevent or disrupt or counter uh, this type of crime? And Australia's engaged with a number of strategies and with a number of partners in the fight against child abuse, child sex exploitation and child prostitution through initiatives such as Project Childhood. Australia also works very closely and in partnership with Interpol, which works with law enforcement agencies in affected countries, strengthening their ability to identify, arrest and prosecute travelling sex offenders, enhance intelligence sharing. Most of this is funded, most of the activity in Australia uh, to counter this is funded through government uh, AUSAID programs. Partnerships. Interpol is a member of the Comprehensive Operational Strategic Planning for Police Internet Related Child Abuse Abusive Material Project. That's quite an mouthful, and there's too many acronyms around this to, uh, to make sense of it. The European Police also uh, collaborate um, through Europol and through Interpol, uh, fighting the production, online distribution and access to child abuse material. We also work to identify children and stop abuse and there's some, uh, some very, uh, or some excellent work that goes on around, uh, around trying to identify children that are being abused and stop the abuse. The Global Virtual Task Force is one example of that. And it's a global partnership between law enforcement agencies which acts to protect children from online sexual abuse through joint operations and raising public awareness. Currently comprises of agencies from Australia, Canada, Italy, New Zealand, the United Arab Emirates, UK, the US, particularly Europol and Interpol, as well as a number of private sector organisations. You'll see it um, on the news and news reporting from time to time, particularly in instances of police raiding homes of Australians involved in child pornography and child abuse or pedophilia rings operating across borders in a number of countries, including in Australia and in Europe. This is the, uh, the thing about the internet. Uh, countries' borders matter not. They don't prevent anybody from doing things these days. And just as an aside, there is a question about how Globalisation, having the internet and other things like that are going to affect sovereignty uh, over time. It's not an issue for discussion today, but it's an interesting thing to keep, uh, to keep an eye on. Anyway, um, the uh, Virtual Global Task Force uh, has come about, <coughs> sorry, these arrests are the result of work conducted through the Global uh, Virtual Task Force. Um, <clears throat> it's come about as a result of work of, uh, of police agencies, particularly in, um, in a number of those countries mentioned. A recent example comes to mind of a ring span in Germany, the UK, other countries in Europe and in Australia, and the arrest and charging of a number of people in this country for possession and sharing of thousands of inappropriate images of children. So what do we understand, though, about the crime? The definition of child exploit, uh, sorry, child sex tourism, tourism is being refined, building on a greater understanding of the scope and its manifestations. Fundamental protection of children against commercial sexual exploitation is addressed in the Convention on the Rights of the Child, specifically in Articles 34, 35, 36 and 19. The UN Convention um, is available to you. The link is on the bottom of the slide. Uh, I'd encourage you to go and have a look at that rather than me reading out what those sections are. But it is useful um, to identify a couple of things about the uh, Convention on the Rights of the Child. And that is that it commits signatories to ensuring children are protected from sexual exploitation and abuse, including prostitution and child abuse material. Article 34 recognises cross-border aspects of the sexual exploitation of children. You recall a few minutes ago I spoke about the extraterritorial extra application of the Criminal Code Act 1995 here in Australia to Australians travelling overseas for 
in this sort of activity. So Article 34 recognises cross-border aspects of sexual exploitation of children, often cases of child sex tourism, and it requires governments to take action through national, bilateral and multilateral measures. Article 35 calls for similar, similar action with regard to abduction, sale and trafficking of children linked to the global child sex industry. I mentioned earlier about some of the work that Interpol does um, and the, we talked a bit about the Global uh, Virtual Task Force. And there's also a range of other work that, uh, that Interpol does in terms of child sexual exploitation and managing a database that enables agencies to match images to try and identify children who are being exported. So the identification of victims is clearly a critical piece of work for law enforcement agencies and for government. <coughs> the International Child Sex Exploitation Image Database that Interpol holds is a facility which enables investigators to share data across the world and assist in identifying victims and perpetrators. The database is available through Interpol's secure global police communications system and it uses sophisticated image comparison software to make connections between victims and places. 34 countries are connected to the database and others contribute to material for analysis. Some of you were in, uh, in a presentation that I gave late last year where we talked a little bit about uh, um, data matching and we talked a bit about um, programs available on uh, on the computer now, freely available, uh, that uh, match people's images. This is a similar sort of uh, activity, but obviously this is done uh, through policing agencies. But it matches images available on the uh, on the internet, and police do, as part of these investigations, spend a lot of time trying to infiltrate uh, websites and other areas on the internet where these criminal groups and criminal activity, the people involved in this criminal activity um, share stories, share images. Uh, so we spend a lot of time trying to break into that so that we can uh, understand what they're doing, who they're doing it to, and particularly who the perpetrators are. This system really helps with that. So um, this particular um, database is backed by the G8. Uh, G8 is uh, governments of the world, uh, world's largest eight economies, so Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, Russia, the US and the UK. It's funded by the European Commission. It was launched in March 2009 in response to an increasing need for, international, for an international tool allowing investigators to collaborate globally. By the end of 2011, more than 2,500 victims of 46 countries and nearly 1,400 offenders have been reported. It also helps um, with another Interpol initiative, and that is the blocking of access to sites. Interpol produces a worst of list uh, that are, of domains that contain the most severe child uh, sexual abuse material. The list's updated several times uh, a week and it's provided to any internet service provider uh, or to all internet service providers willing to participate in blocking access to these sites. It's a voluntary system at the moment and uh, it's difficult for law enforcement, for governments in fact, to legislate activity around the internet. I think you all probably know that. Um, but in any case, um, if, uh, if able to, the access service provider stops all access to the site, redirecting viewers to a stop page or to an error message rather than uh, to where they sought to go in the first place. 